Good morning, everyone. I uh, have a little treat for you this morning before I get on my way to work. Got to get moving here pretty quick, but uh, I got a new bike. Um, new to me, old maybe to somebody else. They've had them for a long time. I'm sure a lot of you out there know what this bike is. I've been searching high and low for one, and I uh, came across one. And this happened to be the one I decided uh, upon. I, I looked at a fourth gen as well, um, but uh, I really wanted a fifth gen. So let's get it started here, and uh, we will get on our way to work. A little bit of choke this morning. It's a little cold. So as you can see, we have a 1998 Honda VFR 800 interceptor. This got the fuel injection just backing the choke off a little bit here it has 24,520 miles and uh, from what I'm looking at and around my area this was a lower mileage one um, didn't have to go real far for it but I was willing to do a little bit of a drive to get a good example for one so here it is. I've done a few maintenance things which I'll talk about once we get moving. But I figured I'd at least do a walk around of the bike, show you its status right now. I've got to get these. I got new grips. Something happened with them and they swelled up and they just don't. I tried re gluing them, cleaning the bars up and the throttle tube and all that rigmarole stuff and uh, it's it still didn't work so I decided just to get other grips I like to keep stuff stock but I decided to go with something different so here we go this was actually the first one that I actually went and looked at uh, all the other ones I just basically text about, ooh, I got lucky this morning. So here we are on this 1998 Interceptor. A really sweet bike. I wanted something that was more of a sport touring slash commuter do-all bike. And, uh, these always had a special place in my heart. I think back when I was uh, probably uh, eight to 10 years old, I think I had one of these uh, as a little die cast motorcycle. And I still remember that really vividly. So uh, I, I always uh, was kind of uh, captivated by the single sided swing arm. So, since we're in a little bit of slower traffic here, let me talk about what I've done. So when I got the bike, it was very dirty. It still is very dirty, haven't had a, uh, a lot of time to clean it up. However, I did clean some things, um, got the tank full of gas, running some sea foam through it now. I'm sure there might be a debate on whether that's the best to use or not, but for me, I've had success. All right, so sea foam in the gas. I just changed the oil last night. Interesting little tidbit. The oil filter from Honda, which I put on, uh, OEM filter, was actually shorter, um, as in depth filter length, than the high flow filter that I took off. And to me, my opinion is, is the bigger that you can make that filter, <clears throat> The more filtering that filter is actually doing but I think it'll be just fine just my extra two cents there so oil filter um, and then two nights ago I no three nights ago I oiled the chain but before I oiled the chain I uh, <coughs> had my first experience of adjusting a single-sided swing arm chain which is actually very easy it's one bolt on the back 17 millimeter 
unloosen that. It's kind of like a clasp around your, uh, what do they call it, a, an eccentric cup or something like that. And uh, you unloosen that and basically you use a spanner wrench to uh, loosen or tighten the chain. In my case, I had to tighten it up a little bit. And uh, this still has a center stand on, which I love having center stands. Makes stuff so easy to work on. Uh, other little thing I forgot to mention, when I did the oil, um, I put Valvoline 1040 full synthetic in the bike, a little like 3.2 quart, uh, I, I saw a lot of the forums and sites calling for, so I just watched my oil level and uh, made sure it was within the proper range. So oil, check the tire pressure, it's, it's going to need new tires. I knew that when I bought the bike, but I wasn't all that concerned. I'm actually thinking about running the same tires that are on my Z900 RS. I'm really liking those tires. They're, they don't break the bank, but they handle very nicely. And uh, I think they wear pretty good too. So, back to this bike. Um, I had to put more coolant in the bike. And it was low. I was a little uh, unnerved by that. So I got more coolant in it. It doesn't run hot or anything. Um, maybe some of you that are watching can look down at my temperature gauge. I'm at 160 right now as far as uh, motor temperature. It could be, I, I don't know how accurate these things are. And like the outside temperature, it says it's 58. It's, it's not the most accurate thing, I don't think. Hopefully this car doesn't pull out in front of me. All right, we're good. All right. Um, and then for those of you who have not seen interceptors before or been on one, um, let me kind of walk you through the cool things about it, for, at least for 98 here that I think. Um, it has two trips, which a lot of new bikes do, but for 98, that is, that, that's pretty cool, at least for, for a sports bike. Um, this has hydraulic brakes and clutch. So that's kind of a learning curve for me. A lot, a lot of things on this bike have, I've kind of had to do a little bit of research because I just haven't had to mess with it yet. Um, like the single sided swing, eh, single sided swing arm. Um, this bike is fuel injected. This is the fifth generation of the VFRs. This fifth gen here was made from, I believe, 98 to 2001. Then they went to the VTEC motor in 2002, which there's, again, debate about that, but what I've heard is is the 98 to 2001 is the VFR that's the most desirable. Uh, there's a plane going up over there. So, this is a six-speed gearbox. What I've found is, is that the gearbox or the gears are very tall which which is nice you get kind of lost you can kind of do it all in fourth gear really but overall I've been really impressed with the torque on this bike and the horsepower I mean it's no slouch let's uh, let's say that I mean it has uh, I believe they rated them around 105 or so horse give or take and uh, around 55 to I've seen up to 59 foot-pounds gear driven cams I'm not sure if you can hear the whine or not but that's what that is so uh, no chain for your, for your cams but uh, all gear so you get that cool whirly gear on gear sound what else can I mention about the bike oh uh, for 98 they split the radiators so on one side you got a radiator and then on the other side it really helped to cut the width down on the bike I believe so you got that uh, a little side note here my gauge my speedometer uh, I think I'm gonna have to replace the bulb it's still lighting but it's just dim on the side where you actually kind of need to see your mouse per hour it's great from like 80 up but uh, I don't frequent that, although I'd like to. So, another thing I forgot to mention is, 
that this is a V4. Not a V-twin, not an inline 4, but a V4. And this started way back in the 80s. And it's kind of just been a cool little cult bike and a race bike to boot um, this motor is derived from. So we got the V4 on this, which that's another thing that I wanted. Stock exhaust, everything is stock on this, as far as I know. I haven't looked at the air filter, but I've also heard that like k and air filters are smaller or something than the originals. I don't know. I will probably take the tank off here eventually. So, I was trying to clean up this aluminum and with, uh, anybody ever use Neverdoll? Um, and it got kind of all this smudge crap. I was afraid it was going to do that. Uh. But it really has this sweet engine note to it. It's almost a V8, like, I mean, it's a V motor, but it just has this stock car sound. I am looking to put an exhaust on this. I've been looking at the Delkovics just because they seem like a decent option for not a whole lot of money. I'm just going to do a slip-on for now. But honestly, I, I might just leave it stock. It is uh, missing the grab handles. Big surprise. I've seen that those are like gold for these bikes. They're hard to find. Um, and if you got them, they're worth a lot of money. I'm also, uh, maybe some of you might be able to help me out a little bit. Hydraulic clutch, right? Um, I haven't adjusted the clutch because I don't think that that's the issue. What I think the issue is, is, uh, my, my fluid looks a little low in my reservoir. I don't know if you can see that. And, uh, I was going to top it off, but I just left it, but it, pulls right at the very end and I've, I've read some things about cleaning out is it I don't know if it's a diaphragm or what I forget what it exactly was but cleaning something out something gets clogged up or whatever um, I mean I could put new clutch fluid DOT4 or whatever brake fluid through it and just do a flush which I've never done so another thing that's going to be a learning curve to me so yeah, uh, the clutch, it still works fine. It doesn't slip in the upper gears. Um, it doesn't slip anywhere. It just uh, doesn't release until the very end. Um, what else? I think, I think, oh, okay. Um, I think one of my fork sills might be leaking a little bit, and I knew that when I went looking for the bike and I took it for a ride um, so like I said tires fork seals maybe um, and I just pretty much got caught up on all the maintenance stuff the bike is running cooler than when I first got it probably due to not having enough coolant I mean it had coolant in it it just wasn't where it needed to be level wise so I haven't posted a video for a while so I thought that this would be a good one to start again hopefully you guys have enjoyed this uh, I've already joined the VFR 800 page on Facebook and I've had a lot of awesome responses and comments on there sharing pictures of the bike so maybe some of you out there are on that page or if you're not 
give me some comments. Do you have a VFR? And uh, any recommendations? I know I've I know I've got the uh, rectifier replacement. Make sure you replace that and wire something directly to your stator. Um, I did look at this rectifier and it nothing looked fried thus far. So to me, um, and it it was the number that was on what what's the site called David Silver spares or something like that. It was the same number that they recommended as the replacement. So the kid that I bought it from didn't know a whole whole lot about this bike. I felt like I was telling him about the bike. <laughs> so he he would have had no idea about the rectifier. I don't think he rode it too much. He said he was scared of it, which uh, whatever. Um, but should I get over here? So, so far, very happy with the VFR. It's very comfortable. And uh, I think it runs really well. And uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So again, thank you to everyone who has commented, liked, subscribed to my channel. I finally hit 200 subscribers. That made my day. So hopefully I can get a few more. I always do that. I always hit the stupid horn. It's right there where my thumb. When I turn the turn signal off. So again, thank you everyone, W6Man96 here signing off, I'll catch everyone back out on the road and uh, hopefully get some more videos up for you to check out. Have a good day.